Welcome everybody to Hoshisaki Technical Training. Today we're going to discuss Flaker and DCM float switches. My name is Lee and I'm here today with Mr. David Vaughan from Technical Support. Dave, I have a Flaker float switch here. Can you run me through the operations of how this float switch works? I'd be glad to, Lee. A uh, Flaker float switch is a simple device. It just opens and closes with water level. So as the water level begins to fill into the water tank, the bottom float comes up, closes that switch, continues to fill, the upper float comes up, closes the upper switch, and it stops calling for water. The board sees that as a full tank. And then as the unit makes ice, the top float drops, the lower float drops, and it calls for water again. So Dave, what are some of the diagnostics with a Flaker float switch? Well, the uh, float switch, if it fails to do what it's uh, designed to do, which is tell the board when the tank's out of water and recall, uh, if, it, if it calls for water and the float switch do not rise to let it know that it filled with water, it's got 90 seconds to do that. If it doesn't refill in 90 seconds, it will sound a one beep alarm. So in the event you had a lot of lime and scale, or for whatever reason these floats are stuck down, it just continues to fill, and it might overflow down the overflow pipe of the water tank. The board sees that as not enough water, and it will sound the one beep alarm. Could just need to be take your floats off and clean the scale off the stem. Another symptom of a one beep alarm on a float switch, what would that be? If the water was turned off to the machine, machine still running, and there's no water coming in, it would sound a one beep alarm and would keep the water valve energized throughout the total cycle with the one beep alarm going on. When the water is turned back on or you get water supply back to the machine, the floats close and it presumes operation. There is no reset, it's an automatic reset. So Dave, we discussed a one beep alarm. Are there any other diagnostics for a Flaker float switch? Yes, the uh, board is uh, monitoring the, the float switch and it's looking for it to open and close. If the float switch is showing a full tank of water, for 30 minutes and they never drop and open, then the board sees that as not making ice. So we sound a five beep alarm in the event the float switch never calls for water for 30 minutes. So if it's in operation, making ice, the water tank is filled, it starts an internal timer on the board, 30 minutes goes by and these floats have not dropped to let the board know that we used enough water to recall for water again, then it sounds a five beep alarm. Uh, the, the five beep alarm would result in the machine shutting down completely, sound the five beep alarm. The only way to reset it is to turn the unit off and back on. Then it will restart the, the cycle. If the five beep alarm returns immediately, once you turn it back on, knowing that it should take 30 minutes to sound the alarm, if it sounds instantly when you turn it back on, then that usually means you got a defective float switch. So within 30 minutes, we know that it's a faulty switch. What happens after 30 minutes, what would we be diagnosing? So the unit sounds a five beep alarm if the uh, water tank does not drop, it doesn't call for water for 30 minutes. So this could be a failure in the refrigeration system somehow that is actually not making ice. So if it doesn't make ice, doesn't use water, it gives you 30 minutes safety to kill the machine, cut everything off and sound a five beep alarm until somebody manually resets the power switch. Hey Dave, we have two types of float switches out there in the field. Would you show us how to diagnose this thing properly? Sure, uh, they both have the same color wires. They both do the same exact job. Um, we have our test meter that we wanna use continuity. So when you touch the leads together, it makes that tone. And the black lead is our common. The blue lead is for the bottom float. The red is for the upper float. So the bottom float is closed, so we lower it into the water. Bottom float closes. Every time you lower it down, we get a closed float. That's operating correctly on the lower float. So we can only test one float at a time. And if you do that 10 times in a row, then uh, if it closes every time, we assume that bottom float is working. And if it fails inside of 10 times, we just think it's a bad switch. A bad switch. So then if we want to do the upper float, notice that both floats have to be submerged before the tone goes off. Again, a 10 times sequence would indicate a good float if it closes every time. 
So the uh, if the, you had a hard water scale build up on the float, then the float itself may not rise. Uh, the floats are removable for cleaning if needed. Thank you for joining us today for Hoshisaki Technical Training. For cleaning instructions on float switches, see the link in the description, and we'll see you next time.